And so to continue the angering review of the four games of the apocalypse, here I will talk about some parts of the HUD and simpler functionalities of the game, where I am entering a, into a more positive realm of reviewing, except for Cyberpunk of course, even though it's my favorite game, it still does have way too many problems. So let's give a few points to the amazing features of these four wonderful games. So, weapon variety here in Cyberpunk. It's of course nothing out of the ordinary, but still decent and there's a lot of different choices of weapons. Of course this will be zero points since the utilization of all of those different weapons is pretty much non-existent. Right from the beginning till the end it matters absolutely null what weapons you're using. Uh, they will all deal proper damage to enemies, melee or range, sniper pistols, shotguns or knives and swords. It's all pretty much the same. So you have no incentive of changing million of different weapons you own for different enemies or areas. Outside of a few exceptions where the quest requires you to do so. So as I said, zero points. So variety here in Red Dead Redemption is okay, you have the choice between lots of revolvers and pistols, between lots of long range weapons, one real sniper, few shotguns, and that is about it. Outside of the minigun, mounted or mobile, there, is, there are no extraordinary weapons here. You will generally be using the same weapon here for almost everything, excluding hunting of course, which I will be talking about later, but all of the weapons make absolutely zero difference in an actual fight against humans. They pretty much all do what they are intended for and that is to kill whatever you shoot at with damage being not so really important here in the game. So basically zero points for this. And now the Warframe. It will be a little bit unfair towards other games in this comparison since it's a multiplayer game and new things are being added at a constant rate for many years now. So weapon variety here is just stupendous as would be expected from a multiplayer shooting game. You have main weapons which would be guns, secondary weapons which would be pistols and melee weapons which would be well melee in general sense of course. You can have normal automatic weapons, shotguns, rocket launchers, bomb launchers, different energy weapons, throwing weapons, bows and arrows, snipers, and so, so much more. And that is only for main weapons. There are hundreds of different weapons, which, same as for most other games, you will not be generally using, but for the sake of leveling your mastery rank, you will be using all of them at least once, and we'll try them to see if you like them. And with addition of Riven mods that are specific to each weapon, you will have more incentive to use some weapons than you would never think of using normally. So they fixed a little bit the abundance of weapons that would just lie dormant in your inventory or you would normally just sell. So most weapons have primed versions of themselves which are the same weapon essentially but with better stats and modding capacity and then there are variants like Glaxion, Arcaracta, Prisma, Vandal, Wraith and so 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 much more and of course uh, building of gilded weapons so I will give plus one points to this and weapon variety in Witcher is, as I stated in last video, pretty much non-existent. Steel and silver swords are the main weapons, but again, it ties to the story and the world of Witcher, so it does get a pass. There are axes, maces, pikes and crossbow that you would actually use if nothing else than just to take down flying enemies, and underwater crossbow is the only thing that with which you can kill the Witcher Murlocs, but all in all there is pretty much nothing here, so zero points to this. Equipment within Cyberpunk is also mainly irrelevant. You could finish the game butt naked with fair ease, and there is some variety of equipment slash gear, 
that will be useful. Some will give you armor or a melee damage bonus, faster hacks, stout stats, resistance to explosion and other damage factors. But again, nothing that would be unique or more unique from any other game. And again, completely something that you could easily go without, so I will give this zero points. You do have cyberware that could be considered as equipment and it does add to the gameplay boosting your stats but again quite irrelevant you could easily play the whole game through as a clean human and butt naked. And equipment here in Red Dead Redemption is fairly standard. The ways that you get the equipment is basically through hunting which is more interesting which I will be talking about later. Equipment here is basically holsters, bandoliers and such, and they generally boost ammunition, stamina usage, dead eye usage and so on. So most of it is standard, but there are also trinkets and talismans that are more interesting and are used for basically everything that you uh, have in the game and are able to do within it. For more experience gain, stamina, HP or dead eye drain, to lower degradation of weapons and better chance of loot. They are interesting fantasy additions to the game and are technically collection which I will again talk about later in later videos. And I will give this plus one points because it is a little bit different from other games that are trying to chase the realism. Now equipment in Warframe does not really exist like within most other games. The only thing I can imagine here is equipment would be addition that would be addition to your frames would be the helmets that you were able to put arcanes into, if I remember right, and have the helmet that boosts your stats, but that was removed years ago. So no traditional equipment in any sense, so zero points. No, Witcher equipment is actually functional. Out of all four games, it's the only one where armor has proper functionality. The armor is truly used to lower the damage that you receive, the bonuses have some meaning to them and do boost you properly, and it has the difference in the armor weight. Light would allow you to have more speed, medium is balanced and heavy slows you down while giving you more defense. There are boots, pants, gloves and chest armor, there is a variety of all of them and there is an insane amount of armor that you can loot, buy and craft and then of course sell if you do not need it. So I will give plus one point here. Now apparel or cosmetics are completely useless in cyberpunk. There are a billion of different clothing items that you can loot off enemies or buy in shops and you are unable to view them to the fullest extent. You will of course spend most of the game actually playing and running around in the world and it's all in the first person view which means you will for the most part not be able to see any of the cosmetics that you dress yourself in. You can view them from inventory or if you look in the mirror, which I do not see anyone just sitting there and watching their character as 2D rendering and doing nothing else within the game. Of course, it's also a single player game, so there is no one else who would view any cosmetics and the NPCs or anything in the world does not react to those cosmetics. So you can be naked and rugged or dressed in elite clothing and it adds absolutely nothing. Well, there being this stupendous amount of just useless clothing, so I will give this minus one points for just clogging the game with pointless stuff. Now, Red Dead Redemption to apparel, or however it is pronounced. Here it's also standard, there's no real usage of it outside of simple cosmetics and a few rare occasions within quests where you would have a fake need to dress differently. Here all cosmetic clothes are bought, <coughs> they do not drop from enemies, with the exception of hats of course, where you can get different apparels from hunting, but again we'll talk about that later. Different from cyberpunk since you will 
mostly play in third person you will be able to see the things that you have on yourself but that that is about it they affect the game in absolutely no way no one reacts to your clothing appearance in camp or cities or quests it makes zero difference if you're running around in your underwear or fully dressed outside the cold and warm areas which again i will be talking about later so i will give this zero points since it's okay nothing special and no real function to clothing outside of role playing now warframe apparel or cosmetics here is also stupidly abundant if this game does something well then it's the cosmetics. The only game on par I would say is the Path of Exile and we're talking about fantasy, sci-fi, over-the-top cosmetics. Here you have cosmetics for basically every single weapon, every single frame, every single vehicle operator and drifter and you don't even need to buy any. You can just change the color on your own or add effects and special additions so it's not only about skins but you can add a specific things to each part of your body like each leg, each arm, back, front or head and on every weapon you can add things outside of normal skin and color changing and skins for pets and mechanical companions and so 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 much more like the game is literally going way way over the top on cosmetics here and it can truly look cool and out of this world good so I will give this plus two points for the heavy money grabbing component of this game. Now apparel in Witcher is simple in terms of cosmetics, but in terms of looks everything actually looks amazing. Now there are no real cosmetics here, the only thing that could be considered as such would be elegant armor and things like it that you will only really use in a few quests since Geralt hates under quotation marks civilized clothes but it does look good on him but since it has no real functionality in the game same as in Red Dead Redemption 2 and no one really reacts to it the NPCs or the world around you so it's pretty much irrelevant of what you wear or if you are butt naked so I will give zero points here now, ch character looks um, or physiques, I mean, dude, was I disappointed with this. You have a game in which, which has been basically advertised on the notion of you being able to make a character look however you want. Augmentations, piercings, makeup, scars, muscle, genitalia, and so on. And it's also all completely stupidly useless. You can look like... Quasimodo or Esmeralda and it's completely irrelevant. It makes no difference on the gameplay. You can be fat or slim, black or white, male or female, it means absolutely Don't nothing. Believe it. Everything is pretty much the same. You can build up your genitalia, breasts, sexual organs in general and that is it. You have them, there is no usage of them. And I'm not saying that you should add porn to the game, but in addition to everything else that is connected with looks, this sexual area was one of the biggest points of advertisement for the game and utilization is the absolute zero. So we'll give this minus two points for the disappointment of galactic scale. Uh, my wife. And character looks slash physics in Red Dead Redemption oh, is okay. Flesh. You will play already pre-made character which would What's be Arthur or there? John, which comes later that on. And you do not have all. much influence on how they look outside of hair and the beard. And they are done well, they look fine, they do not influence the game with their looks pretty much at all. But at least you do not waste your time like in Cyberpunk on the appearance for, uh, of course, but zero gain. Obviously huh? any clothes that you put on them is not really all that impressive, it's just pretty much all normal. Yeah. So I will give this zero points. Now character looks here would fall under the category of different frames. And it has an actual point since every frame has different abilities and different functions and they of course all look unique from one another. 
you have Rhino for example which is a bull charging type and then you have Satin that's curvy sexy poison for example so I will give this plus one points for the amount of diversity of default character appearances here now character looks here is actually good since Geralt is fairly good looking man he is handsome and bulky and covered in scars of course from all of the battles and most of things that you put on him stand really good all the armor and weapons that are on him look proper and fit properly you have no character creation thankfully you start the game and play a pre-made character that is made to look good and decent so i will give plus one points for the uh, simplicity of it because it is different from other trees vehicle variety in cyberpunk is okay there are a lot of vehicles cars and bikes that is that you will be able to acquire where you will same as weapons only end up using only one or two of them one car and one bike generally and unless you want to actually role play with yourself in a single player game you will not be required to ever switch vehicles since most of them as i pointed out in the last video are extremely bad and you will be running with a few at best good ones so outside a few quests that require you to drive something else, even though there are a lot of vehicles, you will never be using most of them, so zero points in, it's pretty much standard with most games. So vehicle variety in Red Dead Redemption is generally lots of different horses that you can catch throughout the game, and they are different in their stats and looks, you can buy them and actually you can play cowboy and lasso them into the submission and train them as i spoke in a previous video to boost their obedience and stats and since there are mechanics on how to get horses which is actually catching them taking care of them feeding brushing and such and you cannot have a million of them you can have four in the stables that you can change which could actually be useful to have a bulkier horses that can take more damage or slimmer one that can run faster or just for the outer appearance so i will give this plus one point since it's not just buying vehicles and let it sit in your inventory never to be seen again or used you actually have some mechanics behind horses and that is vehicles here now vehicles I pretty much covered all in previous video, there are not a lot of them, you have a diversity of them only in the sense that you can build different versions of them along the way, different K-drives that all do the same thing, just look a little bit different and uh, is only mostly done for the sake of leveling the mastery more than anything else you have different arch wings that are like frames with their own abilities necromashes and railjacks not too much variety there so zero points for the amount of vehicles there are different ones but normal amount and again i covered them in the last video within witcher i have much less to talk about in general because it's so much more simple and of somewhat this more decent quality Vehicle varieties here, as I said in previous video, is Roach. You have only one horse and that is pretty much it. It functions as it does and nothing more than that. You have boats for sure, but they can be disregarded like in Red Dead Redemption 2 for this. So zero points here since every horse Geralt has or ever had is Roach. So I will add pets here since it's the only game out of 4 that has pets where other games do not even have companions, let alone pets. In Warframe you can have mechanical pets or I will call them companions since that is the official name for them. The mechanical ones are mainly just gonna be flying over your head and follow you, fight for you, but mainly work as a support that boosts your stats, saves you from death, loots for you, shields you and so on. Biological ones are cats, dog, mutated dogs, mechanical dogs, magi dogs, so lots of dogs in the game. And the more amazing thing is that even 
if you do not have them equipped, you, if you have them selected within the incubator, they will roam the ship and you can pet them. And here, as you can see, the mutated one will play with the infected part of the ship. I mean, all in all, they are functional part of the game and in general can be fully utilized. So I will give plus one points. To this. Like, share, subscribe. Do not hate on the messenger. And of course, never ever talk about Fight Club.